In the 1880s, there was a lot of activity around trying to understand chemical change, especially in Europe. There was a Dutch man with the last name of Van Hoff who was studying the relationship between the rate of a reaction and the temperature. He found that the rate of the reaction increased with temperature, and he was able to establish a linear relationship when he plotted the, the natural log of the rate constant versus the inverse of the time, of, excuse me, of temperature. However, he wasn't quite able to explain what was going on. It was actually Arrhenius, a Swedish um, chemist, who was able to give a good model of why this was the case. And what uh, Arrhenius said was that, yes, indeed, the rate constant K is a function of temperature. It's a logarithmic relationship. And the reason why he explained was that uh, as you increase the temperature, you have more molecules that, that can overcome the activation barrier. And he showed that the slope of this line was equal to the opposite of the activation barrier, which was an amount of energy divided by the universal gas constant. And the um, y-intercept, according to his model, was um, varied with a reaction. It was what was he called the pre-exponential factor. And the pre-exponential factor um, took into account the number of uh, collisions that were uh, of high enough energy to overcome the activation barrier and um, what was considered the steric factor, those collisions that had the correct orientation. So uh, what Arrhenius was proposing was that anytime you have a chemical change, uh, this is a reaction coordinate, um, and we'll start with uh, reactants having energy here and moving towards products with energy down here. Anytime we move from the reactant to the product, um, if, if the chemical reaction is following this Arrhenius law, then there's going to be some activation uh, barrier that the molecules need to get over. And so this energy difference between where you start and where you have to get over was what he defined as the activation energy. And at the top of the, of the energy barrier was the transition state. So there needed to be enough energy to... Um, allow the reactants to uh, come into some transition state, which was a higher energy state, and then it would fall down to um, the products um, here. So this was Arrhenius' interpretation of the um, data showing that the uh, natural log of the rate constant varied um, linearly with uh, the inverse of the temperature. In other words, as the temperature increased, the rate constant increased. Now, um, in this uh, straight line form, the Arrhenius law looks like the natural log of K equals, let's see, 1 over T, and the slope there is negative A over R, and the y-intercept is the natural log of A, the pre-exponential factor. Okay, so this is the uh, linear form of the Arrhenius law. Typically, uh, the, you'll find the Arrhenius law represented in this way, where you've taken the natural log of both sides of the equation, or the, excuse me, the inverse log of both sides of the equation. This is a cleaner representation where you can clearly see that the rate constant is dependent on the temperature. K is the rate constant. A is the prefactor or sometimes called the pre-exponential factor. It is a constant that can be determined experimentally from a plot of the natural log versus 1 over temperature. It's the y-intercept, so it's uh, determined experimentally. And then R, of course, is the gas constant. And T is the temperature. And EA is the activation energy. This is a very common way to express the Arrhenius law. And it's a useful equation if you know the um, rate constant, which you can determine experimentally. And of course, the temperature, the gas constant is a constant. You can calculate the activation energy for a given chemical change. So again, the higher the temperature, the more molecules that have enough energy to make it over the barrier. Hence, the faster, the higher the rate constant.
uh, the higher the rate constant, the faster the reaction. Sometimes uh, the Arrhenius law is also useful for um, if you already have the uh, rate constant um, uh, calculated for a particular reaction at a particular temperature, and you'd like to know what the rate constant is at another temperature, you can manipulate this equation um, to create a more useful equation in which you can relate rate constants at temperature 1 with a rate constant at temperature 2 because the A and the EA are not very temperature dependent so you can uh, co allow those to be constant across different temperatures. So what you do is you just uh, uh, manipulate these equations by um, subtracting the two equations to form a new equation that's going to include both K1, T1, K2, and T2 and that way you get the natural log of K1 minus the natural log oops, the natural log of K2 equals uh, the natural log of A minus the natural log of A goes to zero um, so then it just equals negative EA over RT1 minus negative EA over RT2 minus a minus okay and you can um, multiply this equation through by minus one and you will get the natural log whoops natural log of k2 divided by k1 because remember the natural log when you subtract the natural log of a value minus natural log it's the same as the quotient the natural log of the quotient equals um, ea over r over t1 and since that was minus a minus a minus minus one over t2 so this is another useful form of the equation that can be used if you know the temperature at one uh, and the rate constant at one temperature and you'd like to know what the rate constant is in another temperature or if you have two rate constants and you want to know what the other temperature was um, or you want to speed up the rate by a certain uh, factor uh, this equation can be used um, for many different uh, situations when you have rate constants at different temperatures.